Well, hi, everybody. It's that gratitude guy, David George Brooke, with another guest on my gratitude podcast interview regarding the pandemic. And today I have a good friend of mine, Chris Carlson. I met Chris a number of years ago and become good friends. He's a very talented, sharp young man. So, Chris, welcome to the podcast. David, it's always a pleasure when anybody introduces me as a young man. So I really do. Uh, I like that. Thank you. <laughs> you bet. You bet. So I have a couple questions for you. And the idea behind these podcasts is just to maybe give some ideas and tips and tricks and things like this to other people that will be tuning in, certainly with what we're going through. So let me start off with what is your best coping mechanism uh, in dealing with this pandemic? There is no doubt that exercise uh, to me is the best way to do it. And, and I was fortunate enough uh, to have bought a Peloton prior to all this. So I didn't have oh, to, wow. you know, the backlog and you, you can get, a, you can relieve a lot of stress when, when you're on that Peloton, whether you want to go for 20 minutes or 60 minutes. And so that, that has been the, the, the best thing for me, David. Excellent. Excellent. Great, great idea. And so how about, there's certainly uncertain times right now and maybe even before this, but certainly now, what would you say you're most grateful for? I'm grateful that I am recognizing the awesome opportunities that are going to happen when I, I, I describe it as when the bell rings. When, mm. What I mean by that is when the bell rings, when we're going to get back to normal or the new normal and, and really concentrating on what I'm learning, uh, good, bad, and indifferent through this particular time, and then how I can use that to, to, to better my position in the marketplace uh, with everything that's going on. And I think this is a good example of what we're doing right now is certainly I think we're going to see video conferencing uh, become just explode even post uh, this this unfortunate circumstance. I think you're exactly right. And we were just chatting about that. I think it's going to become a, a kind of a mainstay to everyday communication, certainly in groups and across uh, countries or cities or states or what have you. So um, you're a creative person, and so you have a lot of um, things. You become very self-motivated as an entrepreneur and so forth, but maybe not everybody's that way. So during this time, what would you say? Any tips, thoughts, ideas for maybe what people could be doing while they're housebound during this uh, pandemic? You know, that's a great question, and I, this is what I recommend to all of my clients is that I call it the first 100 days. So be thinking about what are you going to do the first 100 days when life and or business gets back to normal, whatever that new normal is going to be. So think about it this way. You know, what are you going to do maybe in terms of reaching out to your prospects or clients? Or if you're a teacher, your students, what are you going to do for your students? Whatever it mm. happens to be. But take this opportunity right now to plan out that first 100 days. So when the bell rings, you're off to the races. And if you are an entrepreneur and your competition is probably thinking, oh, now I need to start planning what I'm going to do. You're already ready. You're taking action. You're adding value. So I, I, I believe that that's really the key right now is to plan what we're going to do. Now, 100 days is a, it's a nice round number. It sure. could be 30. It could be 60. It could be 90. But what are you going to do? And, and it's probably going to involve uh, you know, doing things a little bit different, uh, yeah. doubling down on that. And you know, maybe some things that worked in the past, but that would be my advice. I like that. And I, and as you said, you could do 30 days, 60 days, a hundred, whatever, but I, I like the name of that, the first hundred days, because it really does speak to, uh, it kind of reminds me of this. They did this stimulus package and they said now the government's, the Congress or whatever is working on the second package. Well, obviously they have a little more time this time to work on it and figure it out and not rush it through before. But I think it's really smart. It's kind of like anticipating the, the next wave. And so when, we don't know how long this is going to last, but when it does, um, uh, to have that ready to go kind of and, and plan that first hundred days, I think is really smart. So excellent. I like that. I like that. So last question, uh, any quote or philosophy that Chris has, whether it's in life in general, or certainly something like this, which is unprecedented in all of our lifetimes and probably be at the top of the list for any of us that what we went through, uh, at least in the outside of our personal experiences, but any kind of quote or philosophy that kind of drives you or that you use to kind of motivate you? Well, I tell you from a, a philosophical standpoint, and David, you and I have known each other for several years now, and you know we talk about is the glass half full you know or half empty and and i look at it uh you know knock on wood nobody that i've been close to has been impacted you know by this this horrific virus 
And, you know, I think we all wish that that's going to be the case. And so I, I really look at it as I am grateful uh, that I had the cash reserves to be able to not worry about paying rent on, on mm-hmm. April 1st. Right. Uh, so I'm very, very grateful for that. Um, and, and then it's almost the glass. I think the glass is full, right? Mm. And especially if we can get through, each one of us can get through this without, you know, the loss of a loved one or a close friend. I mean, that is just going to be really, really great for us. Unfortunately, you know, some of us are going to be impacted by it. And that's right. certainly tragic. But if we look at, if we go through these next, you know, 30, 60, 90 days with a woe is me, I mean, it's going to be even worse than what uh, the, the circumstances are already upon us. Right. We're just going to make it worse. So it's kind of a long winded way to say is I, I think we really have to look at this as a new beginning. And, and, and look for the ways that we can be better coming out of this. And, and without getting political, I think there's going to be a lot of great things that will come out of this. And we have to look at what the silver lining is. And, and again, I want to preface it by saying, you know, I feel for anybody who has been, you know, has a loved one or a friend touched by, by the virus. I certainly agree with you. And I know, uh, gosh, I think it was last week I did a video. It had 10 different things that are positive to come out of this. Certainly one of the examples is this you and me on Zoom talking like we're right sitting next to each other getting a cup of coffee. But uh, there's been a number of other things that different people have brought up and, and that are silver linings to an otherwise pretty gray cloud. Uh, and I, one of them was somebody said something like, it's the re- reemergence of the family dinner that people are actually having. I remember as you and I were growing up too, it was just like every night you were there at the dinner with your mom and dad and your brothers and sisters or whatever, that's making a comeback and all these things. But there's just a lot of benefits and, and it's, it's gonna come out. Somebody, somebody said to me, I wanna get back to normal. Well, it won't get back to normal. It'll get back to something new and it will be different. But in many cases, as hard as it is, it may very well be better. Uh, it's, it's funny you mentioned the dinner. I had a friend of mine say, hey, like, I'm really enjoying the family dinner. I'm just not my, sh- I'm not sure if my kids are, though. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's from our perspective. So cool, cool beans. Well, excellent. Well, thank you so much. Tremendous tips and ideas and thoughts. And uh, one last thing I think about, uh, like, becoming friends with you uh, years ago is you're kind of known by the company you keep. And I think a lot of people have mentioned, I want to hang around positive people and you watch the news too much and things like this. You could be on a downer every single day, but there will be a lot of, as we said earlier, a lot of silver linings that will come out of this. So, but uh, thank you, Chris. I really appreciate it. It's my pleasure, David. Stay safe. Thanks. You too.